the traveling friend wins. That's it. We're going on a global journey, said Pippin. The penguins were not altogether happy about this. They quite liked home, even though they did miss their parents. Back in the cold depths of last winter, the penguins' parents had gone on an expedition and never returned. The idea of doing the same, much as they missed their parents, was troubling. Pippin had basically become leader in the absence of proper grown-ups. And this friendship group of penguins, the other friend Gwyns, had basically just got on with things. There were enough fish to go around, and they occasionally played games of ice hole hopping, where they tried to hop from one hole in the ice to another. It was a bit like hopscotch, but you tended to get a lot wetter. It would be better to stay here. We've got lots of fish here, said Porgy. Porgy was a cautious penguin, the most cautious of all the friend Gwyns, but Pippin was determined. We must pack our little penguin travel bags and we must go on our global journey to find our parents and we must do it first thing tomorrow. And so, slightly grumpily, the penguins set off on the next morning of a big global search. They waddled from country to country and when you're a penguin, it's hard to do. They waddled across the Great Wall of China, but they saw no other penguins there. They waddled across Sydney Harbour Bridge in Sydney, Australia, stopping the traffic for nearly an hour, but they saw no other penguins. They even walked past Buckingham Palace in London, but they saw no other penguins, just the funny looking guards outside. After much wandering, they took some rest by the coast in Portugal. Porgy wasn't very happy. Oh, we could have stayed at home. Don't get me wrong, the fish is nice here in Portugal, but it's really warm, and I'm a penguin. I'm not made for this sort of weather. Pippin was also feeling a little downbeat. Although he had been the leader of this great global journey, he was hot, tired, and just wanted a bit of a rest. I'm sorry, everyone, said Pippin. I think we have to face the fact that we might not see our parents again. Some of the frenguins started to cry. At that point, there was a splashing sound coming from the sea. The friend Gwyns looked around, thinking there was a boat coming in, but they did not expect what came next. Hey everyone, I'm Izzy. Wow, said Porgy, it's a, a mermaid. And sure enough, Izzy was there, sitting on a rock, and was very much a mermaid. Now you don't get mermaids in many places, and penguins certainly never see them, so they were all pretty shocked. Hello there, I'm Pippin, pleased to meet you. We're all a bit tired and you're looking for your parents, said Izzy. How do you know? asked Pippin. Izzy sat with the friend Gwyns for a while and explained that she is pretty good at working things out and also at sensing danger. But just as she was explaining, her face looked worried. What's wrong? asked Pippin. I can sense danger, and it's coming from just down the coast. We need to go to Spain. All the Frenguins groaned. They'd been halfway around the world and were very tired. However, Pippin could see this was important. Look, there's a boat, let's get on board, said Pippin. Reluctantly, they followed, and a tourist boat quickly filled with tired penguins. As the boat approached Spain, they saw a worrying sight. There was a giant shark threatening a group of older penguins. They were trapped in a cove. As the Frenguins got closer, they could see it was their parents. Pippin jumped off the boat quickly and tried to run to his parents, but the shark just threw him into the cove to join them. Now Pippin was trapped too. All the other Frenguins tried, but each time the shark picked them up and threw them into the cove. It happened again and again, until only Izzy the mermaid and Porgy the penguin were left. The penguin parents and all the other friend Gwyns were trapped in the cove, and the shark was getting hungry. Izzy and Porgy looked at each other. They were the only ones left that could do anything. Otherwise, all the penguins, the grown-up and the friend Gwyns were going to be eaten by a very hungry shark. Quick as a flash, Izzy dived into the water and started to make waves. 
The waves got larger and larger until they became bigger than the shark. Porgy looked at Izzy and knew what they had to do. Porgy took the wheel of the boat and started moving it towards the waves. All the other penguins were startled. Why was Porgy moving the boat towards the waves? Carefully, he steered the boat onto the crest of one of the waves. He rode it above the shark and took the boat into the cove where all the other penguins were. While Porgy did that, Izzy used her mermaid skills to tempt the shark away. Yoo-hoo! Hello! Over here, Sharky! Mr. Shark! said Izzy. Oh, you're not very scary, are you? she taunted. Well, the shark was having none of that. He turned around and said, I'm gonna eat you first. Izzy started to swim, and mermaids are very fast swimmers. So while Izzy tempted the shark away from the cove, Porgy made sure all the adult penguins and friendguins got on board the boat. Well done, Porgy, said Pippin. You've really saved the day. Porgy felt very proud. Thanks, Pippin. It's a team effort, though. If you hadn't made us come looking, we'd never have found our parents and saved them. They had a slightly awkward penguin hug and then suddenly remembered. Izzy the mermaid was still being chased by Mr. Shark. I say Mr. Shark, I'm afraid I don't really know his name, so Mr. Shark will have to do. I hope that's okay. Porgy took control of the boat and turned up the speed to very fast, which as anyone who has ever been in charge of a boat will tell you is very fast. It wasn't long until they caught up with Mr. Shark, which was a bit of a mistake, as he stopped chasing Izzy the mermaid and started attacking the boat. Mr. Shark bumped the boat with his nose and then ate a bit of the side of the boat, clamping down on it with his big jaws. Izzy the mermaid saw what was happening and started to make big waves again. The penguins moved from side to side on the boat. Porgy could see what Izzy was doing. In a moment, on my signal, you'll all have to jump off the side of the boat. The penguins thought this was a terrible idea, but Pippin backed him up. Paul, he knows what he's doing. Trust him. We're all going to have to jump. It'll be just like when we jump into ice holes back home. The waves got bigger, and Mr. Shark was just about to take a big bite out of the boat when Porgy got all the penguins to jump off the side. This made the boat a lot lighter, and the big waves Izzy had created tipped the boat over. As it tipped and tipped, it landed on Mr. Shark. The waves pushed it towards the coastline and Mr. Shark was washed up onto land, trapped under the upturned boat. We did it, shouted Porgy and Izzy. The penguins all cheered and swam back to safety. Pippin and Porgy knew that it was now time to go home. They had found their parents and defeated a shark whose name we still don't know. But before they went home, they asked Izzy something important. We think we worked very well together with you. Would you consider being an honorary member of our penguin colony? I would, said Izzy. That would be amazing. And just a few days later, Izzy was ice hole hopping with the penguins and having the most fun. And as for Mr. Shark, well, eventually he ate his way through the boat and had a bit of a sulk. Boats don't taste as nice as penguins, he complained as he swam back to the cove. One thing was for sure, he was never going to take on a group of penguins again. They were far too clever. Thank you to Evelyn for coming up with the idea of Izzy using our StoryQuest character creator. Such a fun mermaid, Evelyn. Thank you so much. If you have any brilliant ideas for our stories, let us know on the StoryQuest character creator at funkidslive.com. And let's head over to our story master this week. It's Evan. Evan, you are our story master this week. The traveling friend Gwyns. There's a lot going on. Uh, tell us, what's that idea? Where did it come from? Yeah, they're one of my favorite animals. Right. Why do you love penguins so much? Because they like the cold and I like the cold. <laughs> Yay. Well, you look quite wrapped up warm in your, your <laughs> school in, in your school fleece right now. Have you kind of drawn any of your favourite penguins yourself? Hold it up. Yeah. Do you want to show me the travel? Oh, you've done it yourself. Look at all those. So what penguins have we got there? Mo, Titi, Julian and Polka Dot. Is one of them Julian? Yeah. 
Oh, I love that. Penguin Julian. That's a brilliant name. Evan, it's amazing that you've been keeping so busy. And I really love bringing you our version of the Travelling Penguins. I hope you really enjoyed it. Thank you for being our story master. Got an idea for a story? Tell us the title at funkidslive.com forward slash story quest and we could bring your story to life. For a new story each week, make sure you hit subscribe or follow so you don't miss a single episode.